After watching this video, you will feel grateful for your country and what you have, and also learn a great lesson. So watch it till the end. The story is of Nauru, an island country which went from being called the Pleasant Island to a situation where people are facing a lot of challenges. Nauru went from a natural beauty to the richest state, and then a place where people are facing health issues and shortage of natural resources. The word Nauru itself means "I go to the beach." Nauru is a very small island in the Central Pacific Ocean. It has an area of 21 square kilometers only. For comparison, India's smallest state Goa has an area of around 3,700 square kilometers. Currently, it has a population of around 10,000 people. Historically, Nauru was inhabited by 12 tribes, which is represented by the 12-pointed star in the country's flag. People practiced aquaculture and caught milk fish found near the islands. This provided them with a reliable food source. Then, in the year 1798, the British sea captain John Fern reported sighting Nauru and called it the Pleasant Island because of its attractive appearance. Around the year 1826, Nauruans started to have regular contact with Europeans. They sent fresh drinking water and other natural resources to Europe. They traded food for wine and firearms from the Europeans. This trade will soon become one of the major reasons for the decline of Nauru. In 1878, the Nauruan civil war happened. People wanted to remove the then king Aveda of Nauru. The war escalated because even the tribal families had weapons now. At the start of the war, Nauru had a population of around 1400, whereas after the war, only 900 native inhabitants were left. Around one third of the total population was killed. In the year 1888, after an agreement with Britain, the Germans took over Nauru and ended the civil war. Germans established the kings as the rulers of the island and ruled it for around three decades. In the year 1900, Albert Fuller Ellis discovered that the island had large amounts of phosphate. This discovery would prove to be a major turn in the history of Nauru. Pacific Phosphate Company sent the first shipment of phosphate from Nauru in the year 1907. by agreement with germany while this was going on world war 1 broke out and australian troops captured the island in 1919 it was agreed that the island would be administered under the governments of the united kingdom australia and new zealand people of nauru received royalties for letting them mine their land the money which they were offered was minimal compared to what the phosphate was actually worth nauru had become a hot spot of phosphate Australia and New Zealand were making good money off this phosphate because their economies were majorly agriculture based. To weaken their economies, Germany wanted to disrupt the supply. Germany in the year 1940 sent two cruisers, Comet and Orion, and sank five supply ships near Nauru. They bombed mining areas and oil storage depots. In 1942, Japanese troops occupied Nauru. They deported around 1200 Nauruans to the neighboring island of Chuuk. to work as laborers they set up a strict regime there and started building defenses and air strips whoever did not follow their order was strictly punished it was only in the year 1943 that attempts were made by the US and Australia to take over the island the retake started with the US bombing the two Japanese built airfields nauru was finally liberated in 1945 by the australian army and navy In 1947, the administration came back to Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom under a trusteeship established by the United Nations. Although it was Australia alone that exercised the administrative power, by 1968, around one third of the island had been mined. The Nauruans were living along the edge of the island since the inner plateau had been used for mining, and it was inhabitable. Although phosphate mining was not a direct theft. A lot of things felt like human rights violations. First, the amount paid to the Nauruans was considerably low compared to the actual price of phosphate. Also, the mining had destroyed the island and made it difficult for the people to live. The Australian government, to provide a solution as an obligation, offered to acquire the coastal Curtis Island, which was considerably larger than Nauru, and give them freehold over the island and to make them Australian citizens. But the Nauruans rejected the offer and instead asked to let them establish an independent nation in the Curtis Island, which Australia didn't agree to. So the Nauruans chose to become an independent nation in Nauru itself and to operate their mines themselves. After taking over the mines, Nauruan people became quite wealthy, at least on paper. 
In 1975, Nauru's Phosphate Royalties Trust was valued at over $1 billion. It is interesting to note that this was the time when the GDP per capita of Nauru was the second in the world, first being of Saudi Arabia. Because of this sudden and unimagined wealth, a lot of stupid things happened. The government bought cruise ships, aircraft and overseas hotels. Expensive sports cars became another obsession. People started to own luxury cars even though it took only 20 minutes to take around around the entire island. A guy imported a Lamborghini only to find out he was not able to fit inside. People went to the shops, bought a few things, paid with the whole note and won't take back the change. The government did not collect taxes from the people. Nauru also filed a case against Australia, New Zealand and Britain for the damage they had done by mining before 1967. Nauru won the case and got around $57 million as compensation. Soon, the phosphate supply started to decline and all the efforts to diversify the investments failed. Nauru lost around 80% of its vegetation due to mining. James Engimia, a minister of the Nauru Congregational Church said, I wish we had never discovered that phosphate. I wish Nauru could be like it was before. When I was a boy, it was so beautiful. There were trees, it was green everywhere and we could eat the fresh coconuts and breadfruit. Now I see what has happened here and I want to cry. Nauru is the world's most obese country with over 94.5% of the citizens identified as overweight and obese. The average weight of Nauruans is 100 kg. The major reason behind this is the destruction of natural resources through phosphate mining. Today. The people are reliant only on processed foods, high in both sugar and fat content, imported from the Australia and New Zealand. The worst thing is that people there see obesity as a sign of wealth. If we see this as a whole, it is a story about how greed and ignorance can lead a beautiful country, once called the pleasant island, to become a place difficult to survive in. If Nauruans had revolted against the phosphate mining, such a fate would not have unfolded. It is time that we also feel grateful for what we have. Enjoy the natural gifts we have access to and avoid falling in the deep pit of greed. Try to use natural foods instead of processed and junk foods. Try to live a balanced life instead of running after money. Most of the time, we don't value what we already have. We realize it only when we lose it that it was the real wealth.